Hello everyone, it's Oshi from Unas Entrepreneurs and today I have the privilege to interview Lisa Messenger who is the founder of the Messenger Group. It's uh, marketing and the main profile is marketing and publishing. Yes. Um, can you tell us just a, just a little bit about what you do? Yes, yeah, sure. So this is our my 11th year in business. It's hard to believe sometimes that I started all that time ago. And um, primarily the business actually, the Messenger Group has seven businesses underneath it and primarily marketing and publishing. Um, and I suppose our real strength and what we're known for is producing books as marketing tools. And then we have social media and there's printing and there's all sorts of other businesses involved in that. But but the primary is the marketing and the publishing. Okay. How did you how did you start it? How how did you become an entrepreneur? Have well, you always been? An it's that is a question that I get asked a lot. And uh, I think the answer after really sitting with it for a long time is that probably was kind of born entrepreneurial. When I look back, and a lot of people, this might sound cliche, but when I look back to sort of school and things like that, um, you know, I had my bags packed in year 10 and I didn't want to go back to school and I was off around the world. I mean, I did go back, but I think I was always challenging and questioning and asking why and wondering why there wasn't a different way to do things. And so I think I've always had that entrepreneurial spirit and how I started the messenger group was um, I pretty much got fired from <laughs> from a job. <laughs> you know, I'd always wanted equity in every business that I'd ever worked for, and in that particular company, and we're still I'm still actually very good friends with the past managing director. But they brought in a guy above me, and they'd promised me equity and all this sort of thing, and and so that was it for me. Um, I kind of dug my heels in and said, that's not going to work for me. And they said, well, maybe you better, better go, there's the door. So it was actually the best thing that had ever happened. But it's an interesting lesson because at the time, I really had no money. I had like about $4,000 saved. That is it. And I was 30 at the time. And I think, and I'd been on a salary of probably 70 grand to say. So I didn't have a lot to lose and I didn't you know, I wasn't on a lot of money and all of that sort of thing. So I kind of just went out into the world. So, so that was kind of a nice thing. If I was starting from scratch now, having, you know, known the value of money and all sorts of other things, it may be more difficult. But um, yeah, but I just flew into it, did a six week business course and, you know, started working from the kitchen table. I'm sure many of the people watching will relate to that. And um, 11 years later, we're still afloat and afloat quite nicely. So, yeah. Did you have any support behind you? Um, Not really. of people or um, mm. mentors? Or? Not really. And I think, um, you know, I think that's why now I hope I'm very supportive of particularly women starting their own businesses and anyone starting their own business because. I didn't know back then that there were other networks like the one you've created or you know or that you could have mentors. I didn't know any of that. I was pretty pretty raw. So I did this, you know, six week business course, but apart from that, it was very much just learning on the go. So hindsight is a wonderful thing. Now I realise how much support there is out there. And um, yeah, if I had a, a me back then I would have been quite happy. <laughs> or someone else who'd sort of done the hard yards and and learnt the lessons and still making mistakes, but you know, yeah. learning along the way. Mm. Do you mentor others? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, quite a few different people. So, yeah, which is great and very, very rewarding. And I learn so much from them as well as hopefully, you know, imparting some of my lessons and, and things that I've learnt along the way. But definitely, I get a lot from people that I mentor as well. What was the biggest lesson you learned in the ah. last 11 years? <laughs> I have learnt literally learning lessons on a daily basis and you know just when I think I've got it all sorted out something else sort of springs up. I think the biggest things overall though the, re the things that repeat themselves are um, having an amazing team because what I've learned is I really can't do it all on my own and it took me quite a few years to realize what my or maybe to admit to what my frailties were. And I'm really, really bad at detail, you know, like I just have, and it's probably like a lot of entrepreneurs, I'm great at the big picture and the strategy, vision. And seeing the vision and millions and millions of ideas all the time. But what, what I've learned is when I tried to actually do the do, I, it was hopeless, it all falls over. So now someone looks after my diary and someone looks after all the project management and the daily stuff. And that way clients are really happy and <laughs> as soon as I try and step in and do that, it's all a bit of a disaster. So I think 
having a fantastic team is really, really important. You know, for me, it's about the journey and it's about very much about enjoying enjoying everything as it comes up. So yeah, open to lots and lots of opportunities, see them everywhere, but it is very much around, well, how do you choose which ones to pursue and how do you maintain focus? And so for me, it's about maintaining precision focus around what our core business is, and that's really the marketing and the publishing. Mm -hmm. um, but then I suppose after 11 years, I've you know got the financial backing and things now that I can allow myself a little bit of the liberty to play. It is important to always maintain that precision focus around the core business. Mm -hmm. And okay. why everything else works is that I come up with the idea, mm -hmm. I test it if it's going to work commercially, 95% of it is gut and intuition. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I wanted to ask. Like all of your ideas who you decided to make happen, they um, succeeded or have you had any? No, you I have shockers all the time. <laughs> Yeah, no, I so so we have a little bit of a different philosophy. Often, well, hopefully not different. Hopefully a lot of entrepreneurs are doing this. It's around almost testing a market, seeing what will fly, and then actually pursuing it. So for example, sometimes, and I've got the liberty of doing this because I own a publishing company, sometimes I'll write a book, and I know this might sound horrible for other people kind of going oh as if I can just do that and but I'm not saying write a book and publish it and test the market but find a way to test it yourself but yeah. what I'll do is you know write a book because I know how to do that print a small run like 3,000 or something give them away so get them into the hands of the right oh, people okay. and then what I'll do is see if it sticks because when I write a book often, it's like a lead generator. Now, not my previous books, but mm. now we'll write something as a lead generator. Mm. So, like we did one last year, Books to Boost Your Brand, which is all around how to publish. So it tells people enough information that if they want to go and publish themselves, then good luck to them and I wish them you know, all the very best. But then there'll be a percentage, you know, a small percentage who will come to us and say, wow, I read this and I love it. Can you help us publish a book? So... So then if I've got another idea, often what I'll do is I'll, and I've just done one on property and I'm doing one on social media at the moment. So we test different markets and then mm -hmm. if, if, the, if we put it out there and the market comes, then we say there's a business in that. Because often it's, um, for me, finding a new business, it's around A, what you're really passionate about. Then what tends to happen is there seems to be a flow. People start, you'll notice if you check into it, your friends and other people start saying, Oh, um, you know, oh, you're great at that. Can I have a coffee and pick your brains over it? And when you get enough people asking you about that, then you go, hmm, is this a business? So then something that's easy to do, rather than creating a massive tome of a business plan, if you just, you know, write something quite simple, put a web, like a one-page holding page website up or something, and then just do a little bit of testing in a, you know, unique segment of the market and then just see are people biting is there something there mm -hmm. um, and I find that a lot of people it's almost like paralysis by paper they do this whole business plan and I'll build a 50 page website and I'll you know I'll do all this stuff and, all this and then they put it all out there and then no one bites so it's better just to test it on a small scale let it run for six weeks or give it a determined period of time put some measurement around that and then, and that way you can move much more quickly on your gut and intuition. You go, wow, this is cool. I think there are people who have a following. Test mm -hmm. it. And then if it doesn't work, you know. So when you said if I had failures, many. Mm -hmm. Because, but it's not for lack of trying. I'm always thinking, oh, is there an idea in that? Is there a business yeah. there? Is there a business there? But I test it quickly and then I get out. Do you have a hobby? Or what? what's hobby. always been your hobby? Um, do you love, just enjoy doing it? I have lots of things. So I have a dog, so I um, I spend a lot of time running and walking with him. <coughs> Pardon me. I love the beach, so I just spend, you know, a lot of time outdoors and down the beach. I love rock climbing, I do spin classes. Sport. Um lots. yeah, I love lots of sport. I just think for me I need lots of sleep, so I think being really fit and healthy just helps you to kind of get through everything and always be mm. on your game. And I think that's actually another important lesson. Uh, Learn what it is that holds you back. And for me, if I'm if I'm tired or if I haven't done exercise or if I'm eating badly, I know because I just don't. I'm not on my game and I'm grumpy and yeah. Yes. So, do you have a mentor or a coach? Yes, I have. I have several actually. Um, so I for how long? When did you start realizing you need this? <laughs> probably in earnest uh, about five years ago. So probably six years into my business before I really got serious about that. 
I think I have always said and I truly believe life is not, the difficulty is not um, creating something but it's knowing exactly what it is that you want to create and if you have a very clear vision and very clear goals set then it's easy to kind of manifest it and get there and so that's why I think sometimes people say and I feel it that I'm like the golden child or something you know because things just follow me but I think it's very much about setting that intention and then it just happens you know but I think anything is possible and I think we limit ourselves through fear or whatever it mm. is and I think it's um, you know we can do absolutely anything but yeah don't yeah. sort of <laughs> you can say I want to be Oprah but <laughs> probably don't say I want to be Oprah in the next two months do you know what I mean yeah, like, exactly. I think it's don't limit yourself at all yeah. but maybe just watch the time frames around you so because it can always happen what what is that that you think differentiates you from from <clears throat> others in terms of success why why do you think what are those um, qualities you have that made you successful all these years and succeed mm. in your business I think there's a few things one is an unwavering self-belief you have got to believe in yourself 100 percent and tenacity so you really have to you know uh, get out there and do it and chase whatever it is and you just you can't be afraid you can't be afraid to pick up the phone to be in the media to put yourself out there you cannot be a shrinking violet um, yeah so I, I think I think they're the biggest things really believe in yourself and and, and go after it yeah and there are so many people out there who I call them gunners I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that don't be a gunner and I think that's the real difference with me I say I'm going to do something and then I do it um, so yeah, take action. I think have believe in yourself and take action. Thank you very much, Lisa, for having us today and uh, to share your story with us. Uh, you watched Women as Entrepreneurs with Orshi and Lisa Messenger. Thank, Thank you. you. See you next time.